Academic Writing. Lecture 14. The theme Planning and Drafting a Paragraph. Lecturer Shnar Nurmanova. Objectives To study planning and drafting a paragraph. The second To learn what is free writing. The plan. The first question Pre writing. The second Free writing. The third Clustering. Academic writing, as the name implies, is the kind of writing that you are required to do in college or university. It differs from other kinds of writing, such as personal, literary, journalistic or business writing. Its differences can be explained in part by its particular audience, tone and purpose. Whenever you write, consider your specific audience, that is the people who will read what you have written. In academic writing, your audience is primarily your professors or instructors. Second, consider the tone of your writing, your style, manner or expression. It, reveal, it is revealed by your choice of words and grammatical structures and, and even the length of your sentences. The tone of a piece of writing can be, for example, serious, amusing, personal or impersonal. Academic writing is formal and serious in tone. Finally, the purpose of writing of a piece of writing determines its organizational pattern. A persuasive essay will be organized in one way and comparison essay in another way. Writing is a process of creating, organizing, writing and polishing. In the first step of your process, you create ideas. In the second step, you organize the ideas. In the third step, you write a rough draft. In the final step, you polish your rough draft by editing it and writing revisions. The first step of the writing process is to choose a topic and collect information about it. This step is often called pre-writing because you do the step before you start writing. If you are given a specific writing assignment, such as an essay question on an examination, then you can write about it, limit it. However, when you can choose your own topic, there are two tips for making a good choice. The first, choose a topic that interests you. The second, choose a topic that fits the assignment. If you are not sure what interests you, pay attention to what kinds of newspaper and magazines articles you write. Do, you, do your eyes stop at stories about discoveries in science? Do you turn immediately to the travel, sports and entertainment sections of new newspapers? If you spend time watching televisions or exploring the internet, what captures your interest when you are flipping through TV channels or surfing the net. Suppose you are interested in the environment, which is a very large topic. You must narrow the topic perhaps to environmental pollution, if that is your interest. Environmental pollution, however, is large, still the largest topic, so you must narrow the topic further because perhaps to one type of environmental pollution, such as pollution of the oceans. Writing about ocean pollution is still too large because it includes pollution by oil, chemicals, sewage and garbage. However, you must narrow your topic further, perhaps the oil or source of ocean pollution. You could make this topic even narrower by writing only about the effects of oil spills on sea life. This is an appropriate topic for a college assignment, perhaps a 10-page paper. For an essay length paper, you should narrow the topic further, perhaps to just one kind of sea life corals or sea birds or shellfish. After you have chosen a topic and narrowed it, the next pre-writing step is to collect information and develop ideas. For some writing tasks, you will need to go outside sources, such as newspapers, magazines, library books or the internet. For other assignments, you can interview friends, classmates and neighbors to get their ideas and opinions. For still other writing tasks, you can search your own brain and life experiences. Four useful techniques for exploring within yourself are journal writing, listing, free writing and clustering. Journal writing. In journal writing, you can record your, your daily experience or you can write down quotations that are meaningful to you. You might write about a dream you had. You might have a conversation with yourself on paper, which you discuss a problem or an idea. The advantage of a journal is that you are writing only for yourself. You can write down your thoughts and explore ideas 
without worrying what other people will think. A personal journal can be a very rich source of ideas. Three other brainstorming techniques are listing, free writing, and clustering. Learn how to do each of them and then decide which is the most productive for you. So listing is a process of generalizing, generating a lot of information within a short time by generating some broad ideas and then building on those associations for more detail. Listing is particularly useful for your starting topic is very broad and you can need to narrow it down. Jot down all possible terms that emerge from the general topic that you are working on. This procedure works especially well if you work in a team. All team members can generate ideas which, with one member acting as a scribe. Do not worry about editing or throwing out what might not be a good idea. Simply write down as many possibilities as you can. Group the items that you have listed according to the arrangements that make sense to you. Are things thematically related? Give each group a label. Now you have a narrower topic which possible points to a development. Then write a sentence in about the label you have given the group of ideas. Now you have a topic sentence or possibly a thesis statement. Listing is a brainstorming technique in which you think about your topic and quickly make a list of whatever words or phrases come into your mind. Your purpose is to produce as many ideas as possible in a short time and your goal is to find a specific focus for your topic. Free writing. Free writing has traditionally been seen as pre-writing technique in academic environments in which a person writes continuously for a set period of time without worrying about the theoretical concern or conventions and mechanics, sometimes working from a specific prompts provided by a teacher. While free writing often produces raw or even un unusable material, it can help writers overcome writing blocks and build confidence by allowing them to practice text-producing phases of the writing process without fear of censure. Some writers even use the technique of collect initial thoughts and ideas on a topic often as a listing process of generalizing a lot of information within a short time of generating some ideas and then building some association for some detail. So, unlike brainstorming, where ideas are simply listed in free writing, one write, writes sentences to form a paragraph about whatever comes to mind. The technique involves continuous writing, usually for a predominated period of time, often 5 to 15 minutes. Then writer writes about uh, without regard to spelling, grammar, and makes no corrections. If the writer reaches a point where they can't think of anything to write, it is presumed they will write what they can't think of anything to repeat words until they find another line of thought. The writer write, writes without regard to spelling, grammar, and makes no corrections. If he reaches a point where you can't think of anything to write, it presumes they will write uh, for another line of thought. At times, a writer may also do a focused free write, letting a chosen topic structure their thoughts. Expanding from the topic, the thoughts may stray to some corrections and create some abstract views on the topic. This technique helps a writer explore a particular subject before putting ideas into a more basic context. Free writing is often done on a daily basis as a part of writer's daily routine. Also, students' writing courses are assigned to such daily writing exercises, letting a chosen structure their topics. Free writing is often done on a daily basis as a writer's daily routine. Free writing is a process of generating a lot of information by writing non-stop for a predominant about of amount of time. It allows you to focus on a specific topic, but forces you to write quickly what you are unable to edit any your ideas. We write on the assignments or general topics for 5 to 10 minutes non-stop. Force yourself to continue writing even if nothing specific comes to mind. 
This free writing will include many ideas at this point. Generating ideas is what is important, not the grammar or the spelling. After you have finished free writing, look back over what you have written and highlight the most prominent and interesting ideas. Then you can begin all again. You will narrow your topic and then in the process you will generate several relevant points about the topic. Clustering Clustering, also called mind mapping or idea mapping, is a strategy that allows you to explore the relationships between ideas. Put the subject in the center of a page, circle and underline it. As you think of another, other ideas, write them on the page surrounding central idea. Link the new ideas to the central circle with lines. If you think of ideas that relate to new ideas, add to those in the same way. The result will look like a web on your page. Locate clusters of internet to you, interest to you and use the terms you attract attached to the key ideas as departure points for your paper. Clustering is especially useful in determining the relationship between ideas. You will be able to distinguish how ideas fit you together, especially where there is abundance of ideas. Clustering your ideas lets you see them usually in a different way, so you can more readily and readily understand possible directions your paper may take. Clustering so is another brainstorming activity. Above all, remember that writing is a continuous process of, of discovery. As you are writing, you will think of new ideas that may not in, uh, fit in your brainstorming list or outline. After you write the first rough draft, the next step is to revise it. When you revise, you change what you have written to improve it. You check it for content and organization, including unity, coherence, and logic. You can change, rearrange, add, or delete all the goals of communication, your thoughts in a clearer, more effective, and more interesting way. During the first revision, do not try to correct grammar, sentence structure, spelling, or punctuation. This is proofreading, which you will do later. Read your paragraph carefully for a general overview. Focus on the general aspects of the paper and make notes in the margins about free writing, the parts that need to be improved. Check to see what you have achieved, your stated purpose. Check for general topic and coherence. Your audience should be able to follow your ideas easily and understand what you have written. Check to make sure that your paragraph has a topic sentence and that the topic sentence has a central main focus. Check for unity. Cross out sentences that are off the topic. Check to make sure that the topic sentence is developed with sufficient supporting detail. Does each paragraph give the reader enough information to understand the main idea? If the main point lacks sufficient information, Make notes on the margin, such as add more details or add an example. Check your use of tradition transition signals. Finally, does your paragraph have or need a concluding sentence? If you wrote a final comment, is it on the topic? The second step in polishing your writing is proofreading your paper for possible errors in grammar, sentence structure, spelling and punctuation. Check each sentence for correctness and completeness, for contractions, for incorrectly reused, for repeated words, and mechanics, punctuation, spelling, and capital capitalization. So, questions. While getting for the lecture, be ready to answer the following questions. What is free writing? What is pre writing? What is clustering? and how to write the topic sentence. And getting ready, be ready to use the following literature, Alice Oshima and her writing academic English.